I'm Bethany. And I'm Kristen. And this is Looking for the Middle. Couch cast edition. And we're coming from a remote location. Yes, No, not are. a remote location. <laughs> we're on location, is what I was trying to say. <laughs> from my apartment. It's not really interesting anymore now. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. This is not our normal recording space. Let's or just recording say that. day. Yeah, we just really messed things up this week. We really did. So... Y'all, if y'all follow us on Instagram, you've probably been seeing our stories all week that Kristen and I, well, by now, we're actually in Houston for a podcasting conference. We're going to learn how to do things better. Uh, <laughs> so it threw off our whole week and we're recording on a different day in a different location. So because of that, we don't have our trusty box to draw our topics out of. So what we've done, Kristen is looking at our list of topics. I can't see them. And so I'm going to pick a random number and that's the one we're going to do today. Okay. So, okay, I'm going to say number 14. Okay, number 14. If you've never even dated before, how do you start? Well, find a boy you like. Step one. (laughs) That'll take you the longest of any other step. (laughs) For real, though. And then if you got to convince him to like you back, who knows? You may be in for a while. No, we're joking. Yes. Hopefully. Partially. (laughs) Maybe not entirely. Oh, goodness. If you've never even dated before, how do you start? Okay, let's do this. Okay. Let's say, let's answer it in like three different areas. So if you're in high school okay. and you've never dated before, if you are in like college, yeah. and then if you're like our age. Okay. And that yeah. way, because it'll be different for that each is true. age group. So let's okay. start with, if you're in high school, you've never dated, what do you do? If you're in high school and you've never dated, I would say don't stress about it because most people haven't. You know, I mean, everyone's had a crush. Maybe you've gone to the school dance with somebody, but real, true, like, dating relationship stuff, a lot of people, that happens for the first time in high school. So I really, yeah, don't stress about it. Have, it. this is when you're going to really start to think about, like, what's important to you and what's important then you're looking for someone. And so kind of think through those things. Have it, you know, in your head, like, what that looks like. And then proceed with caution you know remember you haven't done this before and you're as much as you may think you do you don't know everything in high school yep (laughs) so bring in some trusted advisors yeah I feel like high school you probably feel a ton of pressure to date but this is the time that there actually is the least pressure yes in reality because in high school what are you going to do except just continue to date Exactly. You're not getting married. Right. So, yeah, don't put a ton of pressure on yourself. It's new for everybody, especially at that stage. Yeah, I think if this is the time in your life where more than any other time, time is your friend. Yes. And you don't have to feel pressure. Oh, I need to hurry up and find somebody. And yeah, there are people who meet their spouses in high school, but the majority of people don't. So even, you know, you're not going to quote unquote miss your chance if you go through high school without a boyfriend um and like bethany said you're gonna figure out as you see the guys that you're around or you see other relationships happening oh i i really like that quality about him Uh that's something i'd want to look for or oh i definitely don't want that to be a part of a relationship that i'm in and you can really begin to start forming this list Mm -hmm. quote unquote um without feeling like oh my gosh I've got to find this now yeah and yeah so keep all of that in mind and don't get too hung up on getting super serious super fast I'm not saying you should be dating just to have someone to call your boyfriend you would want to even at this stage date someone that is showing the qualities and the patterns like we talk about that you would want in someone that you would eventually marry but you don't have to decide that at any point in the near future Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, take the pressure off in high school would be my my theme, I think. Yeah, and as far as a practical step you could take, I guess if you are in high school and, hey, there's this guy that you really like and he's cute and he seems to be a good person and he loves Jesus, then if you're not already, like, interacting with him, start interacting with him. Join the chess team. Yes, or go to his football game. That's <laughs> more realistic. Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, start talking to him. And, you know, we talk about all use, the things we use talk your about. friends, yep. you know, kind of. And because this is, I think, where it originates 
honestly using your friends is high school. real though. <laughs> and so, you know, start taking those steps of talking to him, making a point to kind of be in the areas that he's in. Don't be, again, creepy, like we always say, but just make a point to be around him and talk to him and then see what happens. Yeah. So... Okay, so then moving on to, we'll say college and early 20s. Okay, for this, I would say your best bet if you haven't dated anyone and from a just general I want to date standpoint, not like pinpoint I have this certain person in mind, this is the perfect time to just start widening your social circles because high school and, I mean not high school, college and soon after, there is there will be a plethora of of single people also looking for relationships. So this is the time. Get out there. Go have different groups of friends and just be social, whether it's church people, school people, take a class people, hiking buddies, whatever you, whatever it is. Get out there and just be around people. I think that is your best bet here. And don't too quickly hone in on one person. Get to know the group Get to know multiple people and then start to say, hey, I kind of like this person or we have this in common or let's get to know each other more. But I think in those early years, I would say, yeah, widen your circles, talk to people, get to know people as much as you can. I heard someone say recently that college is the time where you'll probably experience the most change Mm. than in a lot of other seasons of your life or your early 20s. And... I think that can kind of work to your advantage in a way because you are going to be, I mean, you take classes with different people every semester. So your circle that you're around solely in school is going to change every four months. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, you add in church and hobbies and if you go to sports activities or whatever you want to do. Join the chess team. Yeah. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) That works. Y'all, I've never played a game of chess in Me my either. life. I, I don't know where this is coming to play. from. But <laughs> widen your circle. And I think the difference that stands out to me between high school and college is how quickly something could happen in college as opposed to high school. You so, can take action on yeah. a relationship in and college. And yeah. how quickly your circumstances could change where someone can just kind of come out of the blue. Oh, I got you. Whereas yes. high school you know, you're seeing the same people every day for the entire year and you don't probably all four. Yeah, exactly. So it's very, you know, it's way less likely you're going to be introduced to new people the longer you're there. Whereas college, you know, you may be one semester, oh my gosh, I could not name one person that I know right now that I'd be willing to date. And then you take, you know, psychology 1101, I don't know, random class and oh my word there are four boys in here that I'd be like I want to know you and I want to get to know you and I want to talk to you and I'm going to sit by you and not to have like oh I'm going to do all but you might have options four months from now that you don't have currently pro tip if you want to meet boys in college don't um decide to be an interior design major (laughs) won't get you very far (laughs) um speaking from experience here and I'll just leave that yeah. and move on. <laughs> Same with a PR major. I had my senior seminar class had 40 students in it. Yeah. 39 girls. No. One boy. Oh, man. Yep. And I was like, wow, I got in the wrong field. <laughs> Whereas I go take like intro to coaching as an elective. I'm like, this would have been a better option. Yes. Sports administration would have been. That's hilarious. The MRS degree. There you go. Of my existence. So, but yeah, that would be my. Yeah. I would agree with what you said. Just kind of broaden your circle. Yeah. So then moving on to our age. So late 20s, early 30s. You've never dated. And I didn't date until later in my 20s. So then talk about that. What did you do? When did you get online? Let's talk about that. Mid 20s. Okay. Um, 24, I think. Okay. And you feel weird because you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I think I should know what I'm doing kind of thing. That would be my kind of like my one thing for this age group is push through the weirdness mm. because you're the only one that feels it. Nobody else. You're, you're not as socially awkward as you feel like nine times out of 10. Yeah. And so no one else knows any of this. It's just this inner dialogue in your head. And so that would be my encouragement is don't let that inner dialogue or that weirdness that you feel stop you. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. You've, you've watched all the rom-coms. You've talked to your friends. You know how this works. And every relationship is so different that just because you haven't ever been in one doesn't mean you don't know how it works. Because 
someone could outline how this all works and then you start dating someone and it's going to be totally different than how they outlined it. So don't worry about it. Push through the weirdness. Don't let that stop you. And um, just once you are dating someone, communicate with them. That will help with a lot of the unknown is y'all are figuring it out what your relationship looks like together. And don't think that, okay, because I've waited for this amount of time or because I haven't dated anybody yet that I've got to have this pressure that I've got to get it right the first time. Because mm. I feel like that could be something that would be really easy if I don't even want to I don't have time try, to waste. Or I don't want to, yeah, or I don't want to put myself out there or I'm nervous because I feel like if I've waited this long, I better get it right quickly. Yeah. That's not the case no. at all. You're still, I mean, if you end up, marrying your first boyfriend congratulations that's probably one percent of the population (laughs) so if you get into a relationship and then it doesn't work then welcome to the majority of daters it's just kind of how it goes and so again where you may be feeling more pressure at this point in your life where you you will be you will be let's not not even weather (laughs) you will you'll feel it Here's how I was going to try to say it. Whether you've never dated and you're just starting or whether you've been dating the last 10 years and you still haven't gotten married, you're going to feel pressure either way. So you're not alone in that if you're feeling that. Yes. But don't hesitate just because you feel that added pressure. Still put yourself out there. If you want to get online, get online. If you want to keep broadening your circle in different ways like we just told the people in their early 20s too, then do that. Yeah. And you could be going on your first date or your 100th date, mid to late 20s, whatever it is, and it's going to be weird and you're going to be nervous and you're not going to know what to do because every situation is different. And trust me, we talk about this a lot. Do this in this situation. Don't do this. I tell people to do this. I tell them not to do that. And then we get in the situations ourselves and I'm like, Kristen, I don't know what to do. Like, like, really, really, I don't know what to do. And yeah. she's like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so, Weren't we experts on this at one point? <laughs> so don't, like I said, don't let the weirdness stop you. Keep going. It's weird for everybody. <laughs> yes. One thing I would say, though, to tie all of them together, though, is don't put unnecessary pressure on yourself. Like we said, as you get older, you're going to feel pressure from other people and whatever. In high school, you're going to feel pressure from other students, you know, your peers more. And same thing probably in college. So don't add to that and put pressure on yourself that you don't have to. Just relax. Yes. God is sovereign. It'll work out how he wants it to. Trust in him. Yeah. We have an episode called Just Relax too. if you want to. There you go. (laughs) More in depth (laughs) breakdown of that whole statement. So you should go check that out. Yes. But yeah, just chill. Chill. Relax. Enjoy it. Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, whatever happens happens and you learn from it and you do your best to honor the lord in how you date yeah and you, you know you go from there that sounds good all right guys well we will be back next wednesday for another episode continuing our what's the point of dating series but until then i'm bethany and i'm Kristen, and this is looking for the middle <laughs> <laughs>